Just before we get into this run, I want to say that this voiceover and the following voiceover are not going to be quite as crisp as we're used to. I've changed microphone setups on my break, and the pop filter I was running just isn't strong enough anymore. That's now changed, I'm testing this pop filter out now, but it does mean there could be a couple of pops for the next couple of runs. I hope it doesn't impact your enjoyment too much, and now I'll hand over to past me, who's got the run for you. It's been quite some time since I was last able to do a pre-recorded run here on the channel, so we're coming in with one of my all-time favourites. This Pokemon line is more commonly associated with Youngster Joey in the Johto region, but today it's all ours. We are of course running Raticate. Before we get into this run, I want to say thank you to everybody for your very kind get well soon messages. I'm pleased to say I have the all clear from my surgery, and I am raring to go with the next lot of runs. We've got some absolute stonkers coming up here in August, September, and all the way through to the end of the year. We're going to be making massive inroads in our challenge to complete the decks and get a time for every single fully evolved Pokemon in Pokemon Crystal. Now that does come with some caveats, and one of those is until the end of the year at the very least, we're going to be having to do much quicker videos. So the videos are going to be anywhere between about 19 minutes and 23 minutes long. Now we have a Rattata, it's 18 HP at level 5, we're holding a berry in our moves of Tackle and Tail Whip, 10 in Attack, 8 in Defense and Special Attack, 9 in Special Defense and 12 in Speed. They're the stats of our Rattata, we'll get the graphics up, and this run is underway. So we're going to be doing something similar to the Just the Battles format we did a very long time ago here on the channel. We're going to be focusing on those all-important key battles. We knocked out a Sentra in two shots, that was our very first battle, and now it's time to take on the first rival. He's got a Chikorita, it's level 5, and I chose the Chikorita because it's the bulkiest of all of the starters. It's no issue for Ratty though, we knock it out in just a few shots, and we'll make our way to our first gym together. It's 5 minutes 32 as the battle begins, but how long will it be when the battle ends? A trifecta of quick attacks knocks out the Pidgey, and we are onto the Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto is going to take a little bit more to knock out. I'm very glad we were holding that berry because we survived on just one HP. We grow to level 11 and we get our first badge in a time of 5 minutes and 51 seconds. Let's move on straight away to Bugsy. He's going to be our second gym leader. He lives, of course, in Azalea Town and he is going to be the bug type specialist. We're level 17 at this point and we've learned a few extra moves and we're going to be using Hyper Fang right about now. That makes Metapod a two shot along with Swift. We come out with another Hyper Fang on the Kakuna and do the exact same strategy. That grows us to level 18 as the Scyther makes its appearance. A very nice critical hit from Hyper Fang gives us a great chance to knock Scyther out in two, and we get our second badge in 13 minutes and 17 seconds. The celebrations can't go on for too long though because we've got our second rival battle. This time he's got a ghost type which is why we've got Mudslap on the learn set and let's see how we get on. He leads with that ghost type Ghastly so he used Mudslap and his hypnosis still hits. This is just wasting time. Fortunately, it was a very short nap for our Rattata, and we are on to the Zubat. Zubat manages to confuse us to give us yet more issues with the status conditions, and a little nibble at us drops us down to 30 HP. Hyper Fang misses, so we get poison, so that's a status condition from all three of his Pokemon. He manages to get a Reflect up and it's not looking good for our rat, but then Razor Leaf misses. That lets us pick off the Bayleaf with a final quick attack, and we are through the second rival battle in just over 14 minutes. Our next battle is actually going to be against Picnicagina, because we grow to level 20 against Picnicagina, and this is where we say goodbye to Rattata and hello to Raticate. It's not worth relying on the critical hit luck, so we say no to focus energy, but we do now evolve. So we're getting a very nice boost to our base stats there, but we are going to also decline Scary Face. I think the key with Raticate is to just go all-out attack. Now this is one of those very, very niche circumstances where I decided to teach Dig to our challenge running Pokemon. I'll explain that a little bit more after Whitney, but we've already knocked out her Clefairy. Hyper Fang is making very light work of her Mill Tank, and in fact it's a Hyper Fang and a pair of Headbutts to knock it out, and we get the playing badge in a time of 19 minutes and 28 seconds. So the reason we're using Dig on Raticate is because I wanted Hidden Power Ice 
for that chance to get through Lance in one go. So I decided if we wanted any kind of ground type move for the Ghosts and the Magnemite line, Dig was really our only option. Our attack isn't high enough to rely on Mud Slap the entire way through. And Dig is actually working for us very well, even though I did misclick there against the Zubat. Didn't matter in the end though, and we're on to the Bayleaf. We use Strength against the Bayleaf, it's a very good normal type move, often slept on because it's a HM, but base 80 power is nothing to be sniffed at. We get through the third rival battle in just over 27 minutes, and now let's take on Morty. We're going to give the Mint Berry to Raticate as a precaution because we know that both his Haunter and Gengar have Hypnosis and let's take him on in battle. He starts off with a Ghastly so we dig away and we get rid of that in one hit. We grow to level 32 and we do exactly the same against the Haunter. And it's a little bit of a spoiler but we're going to do this for all of his Pokemon. And as it turns out we didn't need that Mint Berry because it's a one shot on every single one of his Pokemon. We defeat Morty in a time of 29 minutes and 42 seconds. Let's now cross the open seas and head towards Chuck. Chuck is going to be our next gym leader. He is, of course, in Cyanwood City. He's a fighting type specialist and he's going to lead with Primeape. Primeape comes out and we use Strength to take it out in one. So it's just the Rat versus the Polyrath. He uses Mind Reader, so it's all over for him because we can take him out with a headbutt and a Strength to obtain the Storm Badge in 31 minutes and 41 seconds. And now, do you feel that chill in the air? That must mean it's price time. He is, of course, the ice type specialist of Mahogany Town, and he's going to lead with Seal. We do price instead of Jasmine first in this run because Jasmine is going to be a royal pain. Price, however, should be a bit of a pushover. His first two Pokemon go down very quickly. We headbutt the pie, the swine, Blizzard misses, so it's two shots to knock it out. And that gives us the Glacier Badge in a time of 36 minutes and 48 seconds. Now it's time for the gym leader I have been dreading more than any of the others in this run. It's time for Jasmine, she's the steel type specialist and she has that bulky hard hitting Steelix. The two Magnemites are no issue, we will just dig against both of those. We have to watch out for Steelix. We burrow away and we hope that Iron Tail misses. We've equipped the Quick Claw as well to try and give us the best chance and we get to the Hyper Potion. That is really positive, but now we're down to 19 HP. It really does seem that while I've been away, Jasmine's been chugging yet more of that secret potion. We try a few more resets because we are nothing but determined here against Jasmine. We use the same dig strategy against the pair of Magnemites, and then we get lucky. We critical hit the Steelix, and then we keep her out of healing range. Now it's just one more shot to knock it out with a high roll, and we defeat Jasmine in a time of 42 minutes and 53 seconds. That was messy, but it was about as good as it could have gone. Let's now have a much easier battle though, with the fourth rival battle. He leads with gold back this time and Stab Return makes light work of most things coming from here. We still have Dig for the Magnemite, so we use that to get rid of it once and for all. And we're on to the Haunter. We've got Shadow Ball for the Haunter, courtesy of Morty. And now that brings us on to Sneasel. Sneasel is of course a simple one shot with Return and Meganium is the final Pokemon. Body Slam paralyzes us, but it's all over bar the singing for the fourth rival as we knock him out in a time of 49 minutes and 37 seconds. Our final Jotonian gym leader is Claire. She leads with a trio of Dragonair, and each one of them is going to go down in exactly the same way. We have a return with the name of each of the Dragonair on it, so it's just Ratty versus Kingdra. We use Shadow Ball to try and keep her out of healing range. We swap to return to knock her out without getting into the healing loop, and we obtain the Rising Badge in a time of 56 minutes and 27 seconds. With that, we can cross the open seas once more over towards the Indigo Plateau. We get ambushed by the final rival battle. He led with a Sneasel that's already fainted and we're on to the Golbat. Golbat's another simple one shot and here comes Magneton. We still have Dig on the learn set and goodness me, it really is proving to be worth its weight in gold in this run. It's a certified Magnemite destroying move. We've got two Shadow Balls for the Haunter and the Kadabra, and that just leaves the Meganium left to go. Still a very bulky Pokemon, so it takes two shots. Body Slam once again doesn't paralyze us, and we get through the rival in a time of just over an hour. One hour and 45 minutes to be precise. 
And that, I have to say, for an early normal type Pokemon is very, very good. We'll heal at Nurse Joy here in the Undergo Plateau, and we'll say thank you to Kenya, to Abra, to Psyduck, and to Paris. You've been a great help in the Johto region, get some well-deserved rest. But now it's Ratty's time to shine in the Pokemon League. We buy our four full restores and let's take a look at the stats. We're level 52 with 156 HP. We're holding the Scamulet coin with Return, Hidden Power Ice, Dig and Shadow Ball. We have 127 in attack, 101 in defense, 94 in special attack, 115 in special defense and a huge 138 in speed. They are just the out of battle stats, so have a look at them in battle and they will be higher. Our first league member is Will and we're using Return against the Zartu to make sure we don't have the super effective text. We'll do exactly the same against Jinx and here comes Executor. We swap to Shadow Ball because it's the best possible chance of one-shotting but we don't quite manage it. Two shots knocks it out and we're on to the Slowbro. Slowbro's the bulkiest of all the Pokemon but even with him swearing at us we're able to knock him out in two. The final Zartu goes down to a single Shadow Ball as well, and that's well done in a time of 1 hour, 2 minutes and 6 seconds. Koga's next on the chopping block, the poison type specialist who led with Ariados, but Ariados is already fainted. The Venom Moth is next and we make light work of that. Here comes the Fortress. We don't have anything great against the Fortress, so we're just going to have to grit our teeth and hope it doesn't go boom. We critical hit to ensure that doesn't happen, and we are on to the muck. Muck tries his best to poison us, but it's to no avail, and that just leaves the Crobat left to go. Crobat loves to double team as we range it, and he uses a full restore. We get another low roll, but we finish it off on turn number three, and we're through Koga in a time of 1 hour, 2 minutes, and 53 seconds. Bruno's next, now he could be the hardest of all of the Elite Four. He is, of course, the fighting type specialist, and that Machamp is what has me worried. We're guaranteed to take damage from Hitmonchan because of Mike Punch, and here comes that Machamp. There are only two circumstances that can give us the win against the Machamp, a Cross Chop Miss or a King's Rock Flinch. Neither of which is very likely to happen, but on the very next reset, we're in with a chance. We get back onto the Hitmonchan, Mac Punch takes a little bit of damage off us again, and here comes that Machamp. We use Return and Cross Chop Misses, that gets Bruno into a healing loop. That means we can use two further returns to knock it out and we only have to worry about the Onyx. Shadow Ball makes light work of the Onyx and we finish him off in a time of 1 hour, 4 minutes and 3 seconds. Just one reset at Bruno, I'm very happy about that. Let's see how we do against Karen. We get Sand Attack so our accuracy is down by a stage. We don't get paralysed on the first or second turn against the Vileplume as we miss both times and we're on to the Gengar. We outspeed the Gengar and hit it with Shadow Ball and it goes away. We've got just two Pokemon left to go, we use Return against the Murkrow for highest possible damage. The Houndoom comes out to play, we hit it without missing and we are through Karen on our first try in 1 hour, 4 minutes and 46 seconds. There's only one stop between us and the Hall of Fame. It's time for Lance, the liar with the flyers, and he leads with Gyarados. Gyarados almost gets one shot by Raticate. That is how powerful our attack is. We use Hidden Power against the Dragonite, and the first one is a crit. That means it doesn't matter if we range against the second one, we're not paralyzed for the rest of the battle. Not being paralyzed is all I care about in the battle against Lance. Anything else can be worked around. That paralysis, however, is totally crippling. As it stands, we get through the Aerodactyl in a couple of hidden powers. We also knock out the Charizard. And then in the distance, Lance can hear the fat lady sing because it's over for him as Timer's champion. We knock out his final Dragonite and we defeat the Pokemon League in a time of 1 hour 5 minutes and 43 seconds. And our Hall of Fame time is 1 hour 5 minutes and 58 seconds. We aren't quite done there yet though, we've got more gym badges plus the red fight left to come, so don't you dare go anywhere, Kanto is next. And we rejoin the action a little bit later than normal because I got seasick on the SS Aqua. We are here in Vermilion City though and we're going to take on our first Cantonian gym leader. This is Lieutenant Surge, he is the electric type specialist who leads with the Raichu. We still have Dig on the learn sets for this battle and it's going to be against this Magneton we use it. This should be the last time we have to use Dig in the entire run and of course we get Zap Cannoned against him. We were holding the Paralyzed Cure Berry but look at him raise his evasion. 
We stand absolutely no chance, and did you know that a lock on Zap Cannon can hit through a dig? I absolutely did not know that. We did eventually knock out that pesky Magneton, but it's not looking good for poor Razzy here. The ball is very much in Lieutenant Surge's court. We get onto his final Pokemon, the Electabuzz, Thunder Misses. We're in with a shout, and we just about scrape through on the Stratacornia on the skin of our teeth. Let's hope for a much cleaner battle against Erica. She's the Grass Sight Specialist of Celadon City, and she led with a Tangela that's already fainted. We are, of course, onto the Jump Luff. It's another simple one shot, and here comes the Victory Bell. It's no victory for Victory Bell as we knock it out in one. The Blossom's left to go, and even with its bulk, it's no match for Ratty and we defeat her. It's everyone's favourite pushover Janine next as we're doing the new Kanto routing. I say new routing, it's been out on streams for a while, but I have optimised the routing in Kanto. In case you aren't familiar with this routing, we start with Surge, hop on over to Erica, we then say hello to Janine, we do Sabrina and Misty, and then it's Brock, Blaine and Blue. And while I've got you here in the Kanto section, I do just want to talk to you about the future of the channel. The challenge runs once again are going to be twice a week from now on. This is going to be the first one and then it's going to be every three to four days following it. My usual days for video uploads are going to be Sundays and Thursdays. There are hopefully going to be streams most Mondays and Fridays. There are going to be some late night streams thrown in as well, probably some Wednesday streams as well. I'm also going to be live over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash trainersquidgy. That's where you'll find me playing all sorts of games that aren't necessarily Pokemon Crystal. And as for the future of the runs, we're actually getting very close to the end of the Crystal leaderboard. With the runs I've pre-recorded that haven't made it air yet, we've only got about 30 Pokemon left. We've got some absolute doozies in those 30 Pokemon, but we do need to start thinking about the future. We're going to be doing a little cup, that's probably going to be once a week because it's going to be incredibly difficult. We're going to be doing a middle stage for all 27 middle stage evolutions, and I'm also going to be trying to learn a couple of new games. I'm not quite sure which ones yet, I didn't really vibe with Fire Red, but you never know, I could always give it another go. Yellow's not really appealing to me, so I'm thinking maybe Emerald. I also want to bring some other fun challenges to the pre-records on the channel. I'm doing a very fun and very unique Nuzlocke here on the channel on the live streams at the moment. We don't catch a single Pokemon, and instead the gym leaders give us gift Pokemon. So we get our one starter from Elm, that could be anything in the decks, and then every single badge we accumulate another Pokemon. We won't know what it is until we get the Pokemon. Last time I tried it, I ended up with three fire types and wiped at will, but it's been an awful lot of fun. I'm planning on making a pre-record out of that if I get a very fun run in my own time. And in the meantime, if you do want to see that, make sure you are subscribed. Click the notification icon as well, and that way, when I go live, because that way, when we're live together here on the channel, you'll know about it, so you'll know to be able to say hello or just lurk or do whatever you want to do in the stream. Anyway, that's enough waffling about the channel. We have a blue battle to contend with. He's our final gym leader, and we've made light work of his first two Pokemon. Rhydon's his third Pokemon, and we don't have anything particularly great. Hidden Power Ice gets him into the yellow as he hits us back very hard. We're 123 HP, growing to 135 for the Gyarados. Now, we're going to try and do the same thing we did against Claire and make sure he doesn't healing loop. That is key to getting through these runs quickly. Sometimes it's easily doable, like against the Gyarados. Other times you get a high roll, and he ends up healing looping with the Executor. So we're just going to have to grit our teeth. You can see we low rolled there, so it's a simple two shot, and that just leaves Arcanine left to go. The rain has stopped, so we use another Shadow Ball, and in hindsight against the Arcanine, that was the wrong thing to do. We were leech seeded, so he was going to regain the health, and after we got burnt, it's all over. So it's back to square one we go. We're against the Pidgeot, we finish on full health as the Alakazam comes out. Alakazam has paper for defences, so it goes down, we regrow to level 64, and here comes the Rhydon once more. Rhydon gets a critical hit against it this time, and we are on to the Gyarados. I use the same strategy against the Gyarados as he sets up the Rain Dance. No healing loop for the Gyarados, and here comes that pesky Executor. I'm going to credit that previous KO to Executor and not Arcanine. Executor was the one that seeded us, but we evaded it this time. That means we're in a much better battle against the Arcanine. He doesn't healing loop, and we finish blue in a time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 6 seconds. 
and that just leaves red to go he's our final obstacle of the game and he leads with pikachu we outspeed and we one shot and we get to see the espion we have shadow ball it's super effective but it's not quite enough to knock it out in one we don't have great special defense and we're down to 108 for the snorlax snorlax should amnesia on turn one but instead sees the ko and we have to use some rare candies up to level 68 we go let's see how we get on this time Pikachu, totally irrelevant, doesn't matter to this battle. We're only actually going up against five Pokemon. Espeon is still not a one-shot with Shadow Ball, but I've got a feeling by the time we use all our rare candies, if we need to, we are going to be one-shotting with Shadow Ball. Snorlax is more of an issue, though. We are not able to consistently two-shot it, but we do at least get to see what the rest of the battle is like. This is all important information. We've got Ice Beam on the learn set and we use it a couple of times against the Venusaur and we get a very lucky freeze. I then stall for a bit and decide to use Dig to try and regain some health. We've done as much healing as we possibly can. We're on 135 for the Charizard. We don't have anything great, so we're just going to have to two-shot with Return and Flamethrower deals a significant amount of damage. We're on 42 for the Blastoise, and I think we know what's happening. That crit wasn't even going to matter. We get knocked out. Up to level 71 we go. We're using our next set of rare candies. Pikachu still does not mean anything in this battle. We once again use Shadow Ball against the Espeon, and we take it down to a sliver of health. That is a really, really positive. That means we're guaranteed on our next set of rare candies, which we're using now to be able to knock it out in one. Pikachu comes out. We can say goodbye to it as we always have. Here comes the Espeon. The Espeon's not going to get a chance to set up Reflect. We more than outspeed it and we knock it out in one. Our boosted attack from the 10 rare candies now makes Snorlax a two shot. That means we're not getting paralyzed. We're not getting that huge damage. We are onto the Venusaur with full health. We don't even bother using Ice Beam anymore. It's a two shot on the Venusaur and now we have the most possible health for Charizard. Flamethrower hits us. It takes us down to 94 but it does not burn us. And now we have to say thank you to Venusaur for setting the sun because that means Blastoise uses Blizzard. It's not enough to knock us out. We finish it off in two hits. We grow to level 76 and we defeat Red in a time of 1 hour, 27 minutes and 50 seconds. What a phenomenally good run from the rat. I'm incredibly happy with that run. Let's see where it puts us on the leaderboard. It's unlucky for some, but not unlucky for the rat. It's tied with Nidoking in 13th place. The rat is slightly lower because of a higher number of resets and a higher level, but still a very good performance. Arcanine's now down in 50th place in the page 2 drop zone. The very scary Ariados is now leading third page with 51st position, and of course Paul Paul Shuckle is down in 71st. And now let's take a look at the leaders. It's still Girafferix Redu in first place with 115.57, Scyther in second, Ursaring in third, and Pinsa is still in the page one drop zone in 10th place. But with that, we are done. So I'm going to say an extra special big thank you to all of you for staying tuned throughout this return video. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave it a like. If you want to see more videos like this twice a week, then click the subscribe button. And until next time, I'll say thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all very, very soon.